Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Talk, a podcast from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network. We are here to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life. If you are enjoying this podcast while you wash your dishes or drive your uh, kids to school or you go to school yourself, we hope you will spread the word about it on social media. Uh, My name is Jackie Hill Perry and I am here with Jasmine Holmes and Melissa Kruger, very smart saints. So far, we've talked about witnessing and fighting discontentment and overcoming church hurt and all these other things that are real heavy and depressing until we think about the glory of our Lord Jesus. And today we're going to talk about actively fighting sin. All right. Uh, When I first became a Christian, I didn't understand the like art of fighting sin, I think, because I understood sin very clearly. Uh, Because when we come to Jesus, we obviously come as sinners. Um, But I think when I became a Christian is when I realized, oh, the sin doesn't go away. Like I'm still irritable. I'm still angry. I'm still lustful. I'm still, you know, I'm still a messy mess of a person. And so now I have to figure out how to actually walk by the spirit and not by the flesh anymore. Like when did you discover that in your Christian walk where it's like, oh, I can't just believe in Jesus and then passively think that I'm going to be holy randomly like i have to actively pursue holiness in light of fighting sin um i was a teenager and i remember i woke up one night in the middle of the night and i went downstairs my dad was doing some work and i was like i don't think i'm a christian and he's okay he's always really calm when i would say (laughs) stuff like that he's like okay uh why not and i was like well i want to be righteous but i keep doing bad things and i want to be holy but i keep having bad thoughts and i want to love my brother but I really don't, (laughs) Uh, my little brother. And my dad was like, so you would say like the good that you want to do is right there, but you're not able. And I was like, yes. And he was like, so like the flesh is weak, but the spirit (laughs) is willing. And I was like, yeah, like, how did you know? (laughs) And um, he opened up Romans 7 and I was like, oh. Okay. Quote in the Bible. Okay. Okay. I see what you did there, sir. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I see. Um, But it it was like definitely a huge moment in my walk because that's when I remember kind of being faced with that fact Mm. that fighting sin and sanctification is always going to be part of the Christian walk. There's always going to be a pattern of repentance Mm -hmm. and belief and reestablishing belief over and over and over again. Yeah. I think part of the problem of becoming a Christian as a teenager (laughs) is that you have so many opportunities to mess up. Mm. And so for me, honestly, I just... It was my words. I I would want to do good and not say all the things. And then I'd find myself blowing up at my parents Mm. or fighting with my brother or gossiping about a friend. And then you just feel dirty afterwards, Mm -hmm. you know, and so you have all those things and you're just, it's just, it's, it's just disconcerting to see. So the thing that it helped me see is it's going to be like Jasmine was just saying, that continual going back to Jesus. Yeah. That there's, yes, we are clean, you know, because the word Christ has spoken to us, but that we have to continually go back and ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. and repent. And, for, you know, and the Lord's Prayer directs us in that. Mm. It says, forgive us our debts. That means, you know, each time we pray, mm-hmm. we're probably going to have something we need to repent and confess. Mm. And I don't know that as a church we teach that very well. Yeah. I just don't know. I don't hear when we share a prayer request. It's normally about, you know, a job situation, mm-hmm. a friend thing. And maybe it's not comfortable in your small group to be like, well, and here's my sin. Yeah. Will you please pray that I can fight it well? But we don't talk about fighting sin yeah. and, a lot. And we should. Yeah. Um, I, I think one thing that uh, Piper, honestly, has helped me to understand is that like fighting fighting against sin really is the pursuit of joy. And I I think like looking at it from that vantage point has helped me to want to confess and want to repent because I realize, no, I really want to rid myself of this thing Mm -hmm. because then I'll have joy, you know, like sin never makes us happy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the fear is having friends and community and people that we can trust with our sins um, who will give us wise counsel, but also won't like beat us over the head with like Leviticus or something. Yeah. (laughs) That's a thing. (laughs) I don't know if people quote that, but you know. Quote Leviticus. Hmm. Yeah, I can't. Uh Uh-uh. Yeah, no. No. Okay. (laughs) It has something about unclean. 
Yeah, That's in like does. every sentence. Yeah, I just don't this want a friend that's you nasty woman. <laughs> you defiled the camp. Go sit in a tent. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. But I think part of it is sometimes we forget we're in a war. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Have y'all seen Saving Private Ryan? Yes. Yes. You know that first battle scene when they go out and all those young boys, I mean, you realize how young they were when yeah. you see the movie and they're all running to the beaches and they're getting shot at. And you think... This is a beach. Mm-hmm. You know, and if one of those guys sat down on the beach and said, you know, I'm going to sit out here and just enjoy the view mm-hmm. and you know, get a suntan or whatever, everybody would look at him and be like, you're crazy. What mm-hmm. are you doing? We're in a battle. But I think sometimes in the Christian life, we think, oh, when I come to Christ, it's going to be easy. You know, it's, this is the joyful life. Mm-hmm. But just we don't think about it as a battle. Mm. Yeah. But you know, when you look in scripture, that's exactly what it's described as. Mm. And I think when we don't realize we're in a battle, we're often shocked when things get hard. Mm. Mm. But you know, when you know you're here to fight, mm. you're not sitting on the beach looking at the ocean. You know, yeah. You're here with your gun ready, ready to go yeah. take the hill. And I think that's, I don't think I'm often battle ready. Mm. Yeah, so how can we put our armor on? You can honestly, so to speak. like, I mean, you can push that metaphor really far, especially with the Saving Private Ryan. Because I like when I was a kid, I remember watching it and being like, there's this one, there's this one young kid and he's like hiding behind something and he's just crying. I'd be that kid. That, that, I'm like, that is me. Like, <laughs> I don't want to do it. Yeah, wanna, some of them are like pushing forward because really, like, tactically, they thought they were going into one thing and then it turned out to be a completely different thing thing and it was a massacre and there's that one kid he's like I think he's like calling his mom he's just like in a in a huddle and I'm just like that is that is myself mm. and that's often how I am in spiritual battle as well just kind of like oh I was oh I wasn't ready I, I'm just gonna sit, sit here and like I don't know call my mom yes <laughs> curl up at a ball yeah I know some of them were getting sick on the boat yes just the fear mm. of getting ready to go into this battle I mean it's it's terrifying to be in a battle and so I think sometimes we just put our blinders on, yeah. and want to pretend like it's not there, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden we're getting hit by bullets, and mm-hmm. we're like, "What's going on?" Yeah, and, you yeah. know, and we're so we're unprepared. Yeah. We're not ready. Do you think that there's a way in which reformed theology has made us inactive in the fight against sin? I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that because honestly, there are times when our understanding of the fact that we're just wretches. And we need a savior, and we can't we can't do anything good apart from Jesus. Um, makes us forget the apart from Jesus and apart from the Spirit mm. part of that, and mm-hmm. we just stop at well, we can't do anything good anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as somebody who, and I know, I know that somebody is listening and going, no, Reformed theology when you properly understand it is X Y Z, and you that's just not a proper understanding. We know, yeah, yeah yes, that yeah. is not a proper understanding, but people misunderstand and misapply things that should be beautiful, Mm -hmm. things that should be good all the time. And as somebody who was raised Reformed, um, Reformed Baptist, so maybe not as Reformed as some people would have liked me to have been (laughs) raised. Um, But as somebody who was raised Reformed, I can definitely attest to that fact that there, um, there was a lot of, in my life, I saw just being prone and just being like, well, I just, I'm not, I'm no good. Mm. We almost identify it. as a sinner mm-hmm. rather than identify yeah. as a sinner. But saint. I think also, I think sometimes we can prop up, oh, we've been made righteous by faith alone, by grace alone, uh, missing that the scripture also says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Um, and so it's like, yeah, we are righteous by faith through grace, but we still need to work. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that element of working out our salvation can sometimes be missed because of our theology. And I think what it could potentially lead to, potentially lead to, is just taking advantage of grace, yeah. thinking uh, I don't need to fight or I don't need to repent because again, I'm righteous through grace or through faith. In Jude uh, verse four, he talks about how there were people coming into the church who were perverting the grace of God and using the grace of God as kind of a 
a means to sin, Mm -hmm. you know, because God is so gracious, we can do whatever we want. And it's just like, no, Titus tells us that grace actually teaches us to say no to ungodliness. So I think it's the grace of God that we have received. If we love God's grace and teach about God's grace and highlight, highlight God's grace, we need to be the primary people fighting our sin because we recognize the depth of what God's grace does to us and for us. I think fighting sin too is an act of belief. Hmm. It says, you know what? I am limited. I I don't understand how this world works, but God does. He's the creator. He made me. He actually knows how I work best. So all of scripture is actually, all the law is saying, this is how you work best. Mm. It's a a blessing. Mm. It's a grace. The law Mm -hmm. given to the Israelites wasn't to be a burden. It was to be a grace. Now, obviously, they couldn't keep it. And so it was a tutor to lead them to Christ. But it's meant to show us how to live. And so it's this act of belief to say, you know what, God, what I think I want isn't actually what's good for me. So I'm going to choose to believe you and walk in your ways because I believe your ways are better than my ways. So it's this act of trust when we say we're going to obey. I think one of the other problems kind of sometimes in reform circles is that we never talk about the devil. Talk about it, Melissa. I mean, he's after us. Oh, yeah, like he, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy mm. God's people. And when we act like we don't have an enemy who's really after us, mm. you know, we're going to forget to put our armor on. And I think Ephesians 6, yeah, I mean, Paul is someone who says, put on the full armor of God that you need to do this so that you're battle ready to fight mm-hmm. and to actually really believe he is speaking lies into the world out here and into you know the culture and those lies are coming to us mm. and if we don't know the shepherd's voice yeah. we may follow the lies yeah. but that paul, he's act paul said in uh second corinthians 2 verse 11 he says so that satan won't outsmart us we are familiar with his schemes mm. and i think we have to be like we just can't be out here thinking, oh, the devil is defeated. He's his head has been crushed by uh, the second Adam and all. That. It's like, yeah, it has, but he's still out here. Yeah, <laughs> and he's yep. still fighting our marriages and fighting our minds and fighting our peace and fighting with our children mm-hmm. and fighting in our careers and our home. Like he's still out here, and I think uh, having an awareness of the evil one can kind of like prep us to yeah, you know prepare fighting, for. He's him. fighting the community that's supposed to be helping us fight against. That's sin. true. I think about so often. Um, it's hard for me to get on Twitter. It's so you're not, hard. You're not on it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> because I'm just like, oh, I need to tweet. I need to say, uh, I get on and I get discouraged and I get off. Um, but what I see most often is that believers are so busy treating each other like enemies and mm-hmm. so busy being adversarial towards each other that they're not mindful of our adversary, the devil, who's prowling like a lion. And I think that that could be a scheme of the devil to distract us from looking into ourselves and fighting our own sin and fighting our own. Yes, part of Christian community is holding other people accountable, but we've so corrected and so swung the pendulum. I think we don't talk enough about the devil and his schemes and his desire to really curtail Christian unity mm. um, as much as we talk about how the problem with the world is other Christians. Yeah. Mm. And and so some of that is, you know, one of the best things you could do in war strategy is to have one person fire on themselves. Mm. Y- you know, if you have, if you're in this battle and you have all the Germans fighting the Germans, mm. well, you're going to win. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you have that confusion mm-hmm. rather than knowing who your enemy is. And I love, I don't know who said this, but you know, they say the enemies are the world, the flesh, and the devil. Mm. And so like knowing your enemy is the first step in fighting. Yeah. You know, knowing that the world's gonna come at us. And not that we hate the world Mm -hmm. in the sense of the people in the world, but the systems of the world, the way the world tempts us to live only for this life rather than for heaven. You know, and so our flesh, we all know surely that there are temptations of the flesh but then the devil he comes at us with the schemes and wants us to believe lies rather than the truth of god and the gospel and so they're all and i think here's the thing i think he comes at each of us different ways yes i love um it's jeremiah burroughs i believe in precious remedies against satan's devices what a what a title right Mm -hmm. it's a lot of words uh uh-huh but it's really good it's really good and he says satan likes to 
present the bait and hide the hook. Mm. And, you know, I think he uses different lures with each of us. Mm. You know how different fish use different bait? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're if you're in the salt water or if you're in the lake, you use different things to lure. And I think he does that with all of us. Mm-hmm. So what you may struggle with, Jackie, or what you may struggle with, Jasmine, are totally different than me. Yeah. So sometimes I think that makes it hard to hold each other accountable. That's mm-hmm. true. You know, because you may be able to walk and watch a certain movie that I can't watch. Yeah. You know, I mean, so there are these areas that cause us to struggle that don't cause other people to struggle. Mm-hmm. And so I do think it's still really helpful to have friends in the battle. Mm-hmm. So how can we be friends helping one another fight the battle? Have y'all had good friends who have really helped you at certain seasons oh, of absolutely. life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I've had, I've had seasons where I don't want to fight anymore. Yeah. You know, where I've, I've sat in my room and cried, like, Lord, I am tired. Like, I'm tired of being tempted. I'm tired of, like, resisting the flesh. I'm tired of having dreams. I'm tired of, like, all of that. And I need you to fight for me. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes what he's done is that he's sent a Christian or a saint who will pray prayers that I don't feel like praying, who will encourage me to read verses. Well, I won't read it, but they'll text me to force me to read it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they, they, they lift up my arms like Moses' arms were lifted. Like they become for me uh, people who fight long enough where I'm ready to fight again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. And one of my hugest struggles the biggest thing that I struggle with is unbelief. Um, I have to constantly be reminded of who God is, how he loves me, how what what he's required of me, and having friends who understand that struggle and love me enough to tell me who God is and to remind me of his love for me and what that love has called me to has been a huge encouragement in my life. It's been a recent encouragement, honestly, Mm -hmm. um, to have friends like that and to have friends that are aware of my struggles and to feel feel vulnerable enough to be able to share those struggles. And it's been a huge... I mean, extremely recent blessing that I've been able to take. Yeah, advantage I think it's of. so nice when you have people that you can. It, it is people that you can trust. Mm-hmm. I feel like on those things because I need to know if I share with you, ladies, mm-hmm. you're not going to go tell everybody else. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is what Melissa's struggling with. Can yeah. you believe Absolutely. she's got those issues yeah. or whatever? I had a group of girls in college. We would meet every week, and this is when we were all dating. Yeah, so there was a lot of accountability. But they would ask all the uncomfortable questions. Yeah. They would be like, how long were you kissing? Mm. I mean, they would ask the, you know, yeah. W- you know, where did it go? Were mm-hmm. all clothes on? All this, you know, I mean, they mm-hmm. were asking really specific questions, but sometimes the fact that I knew they were going to be asking me these questions. Mm-hmm. In the I was like, I don't want to answer that question, so I'm going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like just- <laughs> no, seriously. I, there's uh, there's some sins I resisted because I didn't feel like confessing. I just didn't want to go through the drama oh, of yeah. it. Uh, if, if that's holy, it's probably not done from faith, so it's sin. But still, it's like, you know, I, I'm all right. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just pass. And having people who are like in the moment, like I remember one time I was engaged to Philip. We were looking at our new apartment. And in the moment, I called my mom and I was like, hey- let's just talk till I leave. And she was like, okay. She was like, sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's just talk till you leave. Yeah. I was like, Thank you so much. It's hard. Yeah, it is. And it's good to have, I mean, you know, which that was the Holy Spirit. Cause normally my mom would be like, girl, I am on my way. No, you didn't. But she was very like, sure. Let's spirit, talk. Yeah. It was the spirit. The spirit was like, Bridget, <laughs> she, needs, <laughs> she needs you to be gentle with her right now. And so she what do you was. do when, like you might have a consistent pattern of sins uh, of sins or you just have I'll say it this way. So, I have this theory that there are certain sins that are typical of a different personality type. Mm-hmm. And so because I'm a communicator, a lot of my sins might be communicative. Like I might be snarky or sarcastic or even manipulative with my words and language. Uh, me being assertive and bold has worked out for my ministry because I can say things that are hard, but it also can make me a bully in my home, right? And so those sins that because they're so can feel so intrinsic to who I've always been, Mm -hmm. I oftentimes don't feel as grieved about those as I might about pornography. Right. Like, how does how does someone fight or like, what do you do to become soft hearted again to those kinds of sinful patterns? 
I think just knowing what sins you may be prone to because of what type of personality you have. So for me, I said that I struggle with a sin of unbelief. I am a researcher. I want to know. I want to understand. I want to see the facts. And I need to be reminded of the facts Mm. constantly. Um, And that can be good. That can be great. I make a really good research assistant. Um, But when it comes to not being able to see, touch, feel, Mm. audibly hear God, sometimes I doubt. And I could be tempted to say, well, yeah. I mean, but that's just who I am. Um, And I have for a lot of my life. But it's only been in recent years that, no, unbelief is a sin. And when I struggle with it, I need to treat it like that. I need to treat it like something that needs to be repented of. Um, The fact that I think that in my limited human understanding, I should always be able to grasp exactly who God is, is prideful Mm -hmm. and sinful. Um, But it definitely took knowing more about myself and how I process the world for me to become more serious about that sin. Mm -hmm. Um, And the Holy Spirit, I truly believe was incredibly active and involved in yeah and sometimes i think we can dress them up a little nicely like so for me the sin i keep falling into a lot of times is people pleasing which is really rooted in the fear of man but it can almost look good you know especially in christian spaces yeah Yeah. oh well i'm just i'm just doing what they asked you know i'm just helping i'm just doing these things But it's been really helpful for me, for my husband to be like, you know what? Your yes to something is always a no to something else. Mm -hmm. And if I'm just going by what other people want from me, rather than praying and ask the Lord to direct me, I'm really, that's sinful. You know, it, it can look good. It can look like I'm doing these good things. But if it's not rooted in what does the Lord want me to do and really sitting before Him and praying and asking for that, I'm going to get off yeah. on things. And so I think sometimes what I have to do is just admit it's sin yeah. and not try to pretty it up yeah. and say, oh, it's just me being helpful to yeah. people or being so hearted. Because I think language hearted. matters. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I remember when I, I I started to really reckon with that, maybe just because I'm a poet, but I was thinking to myself, I keep calling this thing a struggle when it's an idol. Mm-hmm. And for me to call it a struggle allows me to wiggle my way out of dealing with it. Yeah. But when I call it an idol, it shocks me into repentance, really. Yeah. you know. And so I think just identifying the sin, calling it for what it is, but also prayer is so necessary. Absolutely. Because I can't make my heart soft. I don't have that kind of power. But I have to be able to be honest with God and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. And I don't want to change. I don't feel like changing. This is safe for me to be mean. (laughs) I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to be nice, but I love you enough that I want to change and I need you to change me. It's kind of, it's like being born again, again, and and again, and Mm -hmm. again. I got the Holy Ghost, but I need more of them. Yeah. Yeah. Just that constant journey. I know I say this all the time, but just that constant repenting, believing, repenting, believing, like over and over and over again. Um, Yeah. And I like what you said about language because oftentimes I don't call things idols or I don't call things sin. Uh, For me, I don't call pride what it is Mm. um, or selfishness or whatever, fill in the blank. And using that language is so helpful, even when we don't feel that language. Mm. So I um, am 100% convinced that love is an act of the will because... (laughs) Sometimes my husband, who I love very much, I love because God has required me to love. There are some moments, (laughs) there are some moments where I don't feel the love, but I know that God has required the love and the forgiveness and the forbearance, and I have to walk in it before I feel it. Yeah. And that's a word. Always, always, I feel it after I have been obedient and after I have walked in it um, because I have committed to this person and I have covenanted with this person. And whether I feel it or not, there are vows that I have made that I must keep. Acknowledging and confessing sin, regardless of what we feel and regardless of how we're processing it in that moment emotionally is so 
important because the emotions and the self-justification, it can change from moment to moment, but God's word is always true. So if it says something is a sin, I'm going to repent of that sin and pray that God would soften my heart and allow me to truly, deeply repent and turn away um, while still walking in obedience, whether I feel it in that moment or not. And that can be really, really tough, but I firmly believe that that is what God One thing I think that can happen is when we obey, the Lord can use that obedience to actually soften our hearts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's something about choosing to walk in His ways, choosing to be the first to say, I'm sorry. You know, when you've been in a big fight with your husband or something like that, and you go and you say, I know I... I know he did a lot of things wrong, but I know I did things wrong. Mm, yeah. And so when you're, you know, when you take that act of obedience and even just go and say, "Hey, I shouldn't have said it this way," or "I shouldn't have yelled like that," you're just putting it forward. Sometimes the act of obeying, I have found, softens my heart. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't know wh- how that happens. I don't either. But it, it definitely the spirit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just saying. Stop being so willful, mm-hmm. you know, and submit to me. And then his spirit just is at work mm-hmm. and, and we yeah. are softer. And um, I also think there's nothing that we can do more than be prayerful. Yeah. And when we are hard, say it to the Lord. Yeah. My, my heart is hard. Will you please change me? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I know that the paths of sin are death. Yeah. And I know that the paths, that your paths there's fullness of joy mm. to obey you and follow you. It may not feel like it. And yeah. I think that's important to always acknowledge. Sin, I mean, fighting sin can feel like death. Yes. It, I mean, it's it hard. Because it is. Because it, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, when they say Romans 12, in view of God's mercy, offer yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I mean, the sacrifice is dying mm-hmm. up there. And be holy and acceptable yeah. and all that yeah it's like huh it's a lot of yeah time. and it's it's helpful I, I really there are three images of the christian life a battle childbirth and a race all of those are really hard mm-hmm. but i think the joy in all of those is they're really hopeful mm. yeah you know you go through labor hoping to see this baby at the end you run a race hoping to finish mm. you know and you fight a battle hoping for peace like they're hopeful struggles and so i think when i can view it that way that I'm not near as surprised by the struggle. I think one of the hardest things of the battle against sin is we're so surprised. Mm. I don't want to still need grace. Mm. Yes. I want to graduate from the school and mm. I want to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but just remembering, oh, this is what the Christian life is described as mm. in scripture. Yeah. It's never described as you get there mm-hmm. until heaven when mm. sin's presence is fully removed. Mm. But right now, we have the power to fight and believing we have the power to fight, but that it's going to be a battle. That helps me. What do you say to the saints who have kind of grown up in church and they just kind of don't think they have sin to fight? They're nice. They're kind. They give to their church. They go to church every Sunday. You know, they serve kids in Haiti. They go on missions trip. They they're just nice people. That was me. I don't need any sins to fight. Yeah. I was a kid. Um, God uses all kinds of different things to humble us. My life was not hard at all. Mm. I got married. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for me, nobody who knew me before I married my husband would have ever described me as an angry person. Mm. Um, or a person with a quick temper. Never. Like, I didn't know that about myself. My poor husband didn't know that about myself. And we got married and things started. I had a miscarriage within the first six months of marriage. My family moved to Zambia. We moved away from the place that I'd lived almost my entire life. And God started using that to just bring out so many things inside of me. And when I look back, of course, I see that there were little, big quotations around the word little sins that I had been ignoring throughout most of my Christian walk because compared to my friends who were not saved as long as I was or didn't grow up like I was, I was actually a pretty good person, Mm -hmm. probably, you know, I mean, give or take a few thousand sins that make me unworthy (laughs) of heaven, but you know, Um, but God used my marriage and my motherhood and grief and loss to really bring 
to the surface things that I had always bundled up and kept quiet in pursuit of being the good Christian girl. And I am so grateful that he did that. It was jarring and scary for all of, for all parties involved. Um, but it was good. It was good. And so what I would say to the young Christian who- Or has, older. Uh, or older, yeah. who has grown up in the church their whole life and thinks that they don't have any, like any long-term struggles with sin, humble yourself. Please ask God to show you those areas and so that you can confess them um, and be open and willing to whatever the Spirit might show you because- um, you can, if you're a believer, you can ask for God to show you things mm-hmm. and be party to him, to the fact that he's showing you things, or you can be like me and not ask and mm-hmm. end up having an explosion of those things. Um, when bad things happen to you or when things happen to you that bring those things out, I would have much rather been the person who was praying for it mm-hmm. and getting battle ready than the person who was caught off guard because of her own pride. Tweet. I think it's actually one of the most fearful things not to feel any conviction over sin. Yeah. I would almost say, and I hope this doesn't come off as judgmental, you might need to say, am I a believer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one of the markers of a believer is that all of the sudden sin becomes very uncomfortable. So when you're not a Christian— you're actually, you feel pretty good about yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so a non-Christian thinks, no, I'm doing everything. Pre- I'm, I'm beating the odds. Mm-hmm. I'm, yep. I'm doing yep. pretty well. It's been since I've been a Christian that all the sins bother me, you know, and it's like the Lord is kind. They don't all bother you at once. Yeah. You know, it's like Very slowly. Tough. Now it's the things that I see running through my mind. You know, the unkind thoughts, um, the prideful thoughts, the why is she doing it that way, judgmental Mm -hmm. thoughts or whatever. And I'm so bothered by them, Mm. you know, and it's new things are bothering me. It used to be always I might have just said something that would bother me. But the Lord keeps working on us. And so I think one of the realities of all Christians is that we're we're really uncomfortable yeah. with our sin, that the Spirit's speaking mm-hmm. in our lives. And so if someone's not feeling any battle or they think they're fine, it's good to go to the Lord and yeah. say, show me, because yeah. I should be fighting something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And compare yeah. yourself to His Word and His standard, not to other people. Because if you compare yourself to other people, you can always find somebody who's doing worse than you. Um, but if you compare yourself to the Sermon on the Mount, well, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, go read the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's it's easy to create uh, your own standard of righteousness mm-hmm. um, when you compare your righteousness to another person. Absolutely. Uh, but when you when you mimic Isaiah six, for example, and you look upon the holiness of God, you're gonna say, "Woe is me!" Like you're gonna recognize, "Oh, I'm not that." At all. I have broke many laws. Mm -hmm. Um, And so for that reason, I need him to cleanse me, Uh, not with coal, but with Christ. Uh, How would you encourage those who are actively fighting sin um, just to encourage them to keep going? But in in your encouragement, like what word or what scripture or what passage or what story would you point people to? I love Hebrews 11. Therefore, since we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses— I feel like that image is of these people cheering you on in your race. And you know what? When you read that list, they were all a mess. Yeah, they were. Everybody (laughs) in the Hall of Faith did a lot of messy things. But they're cheering. You know, we're surrounded by them. And there's a better day coming. So because I know that heaven is coming and one day the presence of sin will be removed, Mm. I can fight today. Yeah. One day we will be at rest. This battle will be no more. And so I can put my armor on from Ephesians 6, go out battle ready, knowing peace will come. Yeah, I think uh, mine is Jude, honestly, 24 and 25, to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before his glorious presence with great joy to the only God, our Father, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I think for me, some people could read it and say, oh, he's going to keep me. He's going to present me blameless. I don't have to do anything. But for me, it makes me worship and it makes me want to be near him to know that with all of my mess and with all of my junk, 
And with all of the sin, even the sin I committed this morning, they yell it at my daughter because she don't feel like putting her shoes on. Right. Um, I know that God, through his spirit, is keeping me. And by me, I guess, recognizing that he's keeping me and recognizing that he's good and recognizing that he's merciful, it makes me want more of him. And because I want more of him, it makes me want less of my sin. So it all kind of works together, I think, uh, for me to be trying to be holy. What about you, Jasmine? It just continues to be that passage in Romans where Paul is confessing his constant battle with sin. Um, that when I was 14, when I'm 30, just continues to encourage me and remind me that the same person who told us to put on the armor of God and who told us to battle well and who told us that this Christian life is death um, still struggled and continuously struggled to bring his thoughts captive and to take charge of the flesh that wanted to rule him by the power of the spirit. And um, every single time I go back and read that passage, I am encouraged. First Corinthians 2, where it talks about um, how we basically have, we have the mind of God through Christ, and it's constantly enabling us to overcome these earthly things and to overcome these earthly thoughts. I have access to the God of the universe in all of these battles. And Christ has interceded for me um, and the spirit indwells me. And that's no small thing. Yeah. And so I always, that passage always brings encouragement You're so to me godly. As well. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's transition to our favorite thing. Our least favorite thing is sin. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. But today, the question is, uh, what is your favorite time of the day? Morning is my favorite time of day. By morning, you mean what? I'm a really big morning person. So actually, my favorite time to sleep mm -hmm. is if I wake up and it's like three o'clock in the morning, that to me is like the best time to snuggle back into bed. It's like that good. It's that like nice sleep where you're just like, oh, oh you like yes. waking up? Oh, I love it. I love to just wake up, look at the clock and see that I still have like three or four hours of sleep left mm -hmm. and then just like sink into that sleep. And then I'm a morning person too. So, so you wake up, wake up at what time? Uh, like 545 naturally, but, On then purpose? but then I'll lay there. On purpose? No, it's just, I wake up at like 530, 545, six. And, and then you're happy. I'm good. Oh. But then I don't get up. I just lay there. I'm like, this is nice. Okay. I made it through the like night. Like you have an alarm? No, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> just need a it's clarity just on that. I just wake up early naturally. Um, when I was a kid, <laughs> this is so morbid. Feel free to cut this out. When I was a kid, I was always I was always afraid of dying in my sleep. Okay. So I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be like, I'm made alive. It. <laughs> New have, mercies. I still have that feeling of like every morning I'm like, I made it. What's because did you pray that prayer? <laughs> now I lay me down, down to sleep. sleep. If uh, I, I pray, did, I pray the Lord, pray the Lord uh, my soul to keep it. That's like in earnest. That's, that's like, the scariest it, keep it. little song Why prayer do we thing. Teach that I have to no children. idea. Because people like me need to be reminded that you could be dying in your sleep. So take care of your sin. <laughs> I pray the Lord my soul to keep, keep it. it. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take it. Okay. Take it. Not take it. But it, it's terrifying <laughs> to tell these poor children. That, What's your favorite you know? time of the day, Melissa? You know, I think my favorite time is before bed, I go and always read by myself. And it's my favorite time because I feel like all the chores of the day are done. And I can just get away with my book. And hopefully no one will talk to me. And I can just be quiet. And it's it's my time. Just this little moment to read a chapter or two before I think I mine is a uh, noon because that's nap time for my children ah so it's it's the only space where all is quiet mm -hmm. so if I want to work I can work if I want to watch Food Network I can watch Food Network if I want to read but I try not to read because I fall asleep um so I just try to take care of things that I can't take care of when they're woke and so that's become a fave of mine when I was single it was obviously after seven mm -hmm. seven to four four a.m whatever I, I just would do nothing go to ihop you know 
Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Let's Talk. You can subscribe to Let's Talk through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. Check out other shows from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network at tgc.org forward slash podcast. The Gospel Coalition connects Christians to resources that apply the truth and beauty of the gospel to all of life.